Okay, 0, 10, surface area. Surface area, guys, is area of the surface. So these are fairly easy to do. You just need to realize that there's a lot of surfaces to objects. So the two main pieces or things are going to be the ones that we did the volumes on. So the prisms, the rectangular prisms, and the cylinders or circular prisms. And so if I have a rectangular prism, you need to realize, and now I pulled this off the internet, um, so it uses a little bit different variables. It uses an L and an H there, and a B, where L is your length, height is L, or H, height is H, and B is the depth that kind of goes back into the board there, here. And so um, you got length on top, this longer side, the height is here, and B would be that depth of the box going into the box, into the pit, or the, or the board. And what you can see is that if it doesn't matter if it's a rectangle that's oblong or a rectangle that's actually a square, if you look at a die, how many sides or how many numbers are on a die or a dice? Die is singular. There's six, right? So there's six sides on a single die because a rectangle has six sides. It has a top and a top bottom, the two ends on the sides, and then your front and a back. The cool thing about it is if you're looking here, this top of the box and the bottom of the box, which you can't see because it's sitting on, are exactly the same. Just like our end caps, that end cap is B times H. All the way over here where you can't see again is B times H. There's two of those. And there's a front and a back, which are the exact same size. In our little problem here, that would be an L and an H. So what they did is that they say, hey, it's two of them, two LBs plus two BH plus two HLs, all added together. And then they can factor off a 2, which would be 2 times LB plus BH plus HL. And then just because there's, so, there's several different variations on how you can make it look, but they're all the same. Then if we go to the surface area of a cylinder. Now the surface area of a cylinder, there's a couple different spots here. There is a top, right, your circle. That matches the bottom, which is another circle. So your top and bottom of the can are exactly the same. But there's more to it. There's this whole part of the can that, if we're saying a can, that the label would be on, right? That label is a surface area. It's got a surface area. And what you need to realize is that if I go here, it gives me 2 pi r squared because pi r squared is the, the area of the top, area of the bottom. And there's two of them. But then it has 2 pi r h? What is 2 pi r h? What is 2 pi r again? What is 2 pi r? Start to the C. It's the circumference. It's the circumference that if I started walking around the rim of that of the can. That's the distance around. Because why? If I took the can and I cut the top off, cut the bottom off, I would have those pieces here. And then take this can and cut it down one of the edges and lay it out. It forms a rectangle. If you cut the top and bottom off a can and then cut the can down the side and laid it out flat, it would form a rectangle with height still being the side of the can, the height, but then this would be 2 pi r, or your circumference. And so therefore, that's why they get 2 pi r times h, because it's length times width, or base times height, which is area of the rectangle. And of course, your two circles here are pi r squared, pi r squared. And if you add them all up, you get the nice little formula that is there. All we have to do now is two examples. I think the one example is the one that we did for the volume of the box. So now we're just going to find the surface area of the box. 
yes, our problems that we're going to have to do, we're probably more than likely going to get a single object, and it's going to say find the area of this, or it's going to find the volume and service area at the same time, because they can use the same figure for that. So what we need to do is you need to realize that we have six different sides, and they come in pairs. So let's talk about first the front and the back. What are the dimensions of the front box? This really long one here. What is that? What are the dimensions? 11 by 6. And 11 times 6, right? That would be 11 times 6 would equal 66. That's your front and back. What's another piece? What's another piece? What's another side? We got front and back. Top and bottom, okay. Top and bottom, I'll color code, we'll go to blue here. Top and bottom. So if I draw the top and bottom piece, again, it's a longer one. What are the dimensions of the top? It looks like it still travels all the way along this, which was 11. And it has a depth now, right? What's that distance going back? Ends up being a 5. So it's 11 times 5, which is 55. So one top is 55. One side is a 66. What's the last remaining piece? It's this thing, right? Two of these. And that happens to be more of a smaller rectangle with dimensions of 5 by 6. And 6 times 5 is 30, right? We know we have two of each of these. And this is where you have options. You can take all three of these numbers and add them all up and then just multiply it by two. Or I can take them individually, take 66, multiply it by two. Let's just do it that way. Times it by two, you get, what's 66 times two? Times two, times two, 66 times two. 60 times two is 120. Six plus six is 12, and 12 plus 120 is 132. What's 55 plus 55, or 55 times 2? 110. 2 times 30? 60. And then add them all up. 2 plus 0 plus 0 is 2. 3 plus 1 is plus 6. 10, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 302 centimeters. We're talking about surface area. So it's centimeters. Moving on to the cylinder. The cylinder is kind of nice because there's only three pieces, and two of them are exactly the same. It tells you the radius is 4, the height of the whole entire can is 12. So I'm going to work above here and below. Pi r squared would end up being the end caps, right? And we have two of those, so I'm going to multiply that by 2. What is the radius again? The radius happens to be 4. What's 4 squared? 16 
So it's 2 times pi times 16, which ends up being 2 times 16? 32. So we have 32 pi. We just found the area of each end, which ends up being 32 pi. We now have to find the area of the very large rectangle as I put it up and lay it down flat. Mm. Well, the height is the 12. Notice that this is not necessarily sitting the correct way from that picture. What I needed to do is I needed to take the can and I needed to rotate it and roll it out. That's what I was doing here. Because 12 is the height of the can, where this distance here along the long line is the circumference. And circumference, remember, is 2 pi times r, which is 4. And 2 times 4 is 8 pi. So the area of this is just 12 times 8 pi. Leave it in terms of pi because it makes it a lot easier for us. What's 12 times 8? 96 pi. All I need to do is take these two numbers and put them together. What's 32 pi plus 96 pi? 2 plus 6 is an 8. We know they're going to be pi. And so 3 plus 9 is 12. 128 centimeters pi centimeters squared. And you just found the surface area of all of those objects.